All right, so you finally kind of possibly maybe thought that you're too much of a people pleaser, you're too much into helping other people, and yet how can that be a bad thing? How can you justify not doing everything for other people and putting yourself out there? Doesn't that mean you're a lovely, caring person, an empathetic person, putting other people's needs before your own? Isn't that sort of what life's about? Surely that makes you a better person, doesn't it? Well, a lot of time that does make you a little bit better person, but we also have to remember what is true to ourselves. And sometimes once you go down the rabbit hole of being a people pleaser, we actually forget who we are. We lose our own identity. We lose our own needs. Once we go down that far, then we're actually not being true to ourselves and we're actually lying to other people. We've forgotten the person that we need to be the truest to is ourselves. And this little video, we're just looking at one simple thing of trying to break that cycle of being a people pleaser and putting everyone else's needs first. So what they often say is be true to yourself, set healthy boundaries, stop making excuses, spend a little time alone, and also reminding yourself that you can't please all the people all the time. It's simply not possible. And yet as a people pleaser, you will do all sorts of unbelievable acts to try and make sure you do try and please everyone all the time. And this is the one habit that we want to try and stop because as a people pleaser, once you've gone down that rabbit hole far enough, you actually forget what pleases you. You can't remember how you actually go about giving yourself joy apart from the joy of giving other people. But eventually that slowly, progressively turns into a grind, which turns into burnout, which turns into totally jaded and then you separate yourself from everything. So one of the first two warning signs to yourself is making sure that when you're noticing how much you're saying sorry is the first statement that you say, and also when your inner voice is actually screaming at you going, I'm not sure if this is right for you. We've got to slowly start noticing those two things. They're the important things, they're the important triggers because the other things of actually doing what is pleasing to yourself, often once you've gone down that rabbit hole of being a people pleaser, you actually can't remember. You don't know what pleases you and that boat takes a little while before you find a direction. It becomes a bit of a rudderless, but being rudderless is actually a really good sign because that means you're not anchored to the past. It just means you haven't found your direction for the future. Don't try and search too hard for that because often you'll end up going straight back into people pleasing. But if you can listen to those two things of noticing when you're saying sorry all the time, every sentence, every statement starts with a sorry or ends with a sorry. And also when your inner voice is actually screaming at you to say no and yet you somehow continually say yes. So if we can actually change the language, firstly around the word of sorry, making sure that we don't immediately apologize for something that's often outside our control and external to us, and is actually perceived from other people about what we should, their needs are and what their wants are rather than our own needs and wants and what our capacity, importantly, is to be able to give to that situation. And then the other thing of that is when our inner voice is screaming at us to say no, is to take a pause and learn to say no. Now, sometimes this is a really hard situation because saying no, especially for someone that you've often been able to be obliging to, been able to being a rescuer to, being able to carry them in their journey or whatever they're doing, then that's often the hardest person to say no to initially and that will break down your barriers quite easily. But if you can practice it saying no in situations that don't really matter, that's probably my biggest advice to you, is getting used to saying no in situations that don't really matter. You actually then are extending that first little sense of boundaries. And it's just establishing those first little sense of boundaries. Of course, if you're brave enough, say no to the biggest person or the biggest thing that is saying and sucking all your time and sucking all your energy. But that's often, as a people pleaser, a very hard thing to do. And it goes against all our instincts of being a people pleaser. So if we can say no to those little things, saying no to those obvious things, that why were we saying yes in the first place? It just slowly gets us in the habit, gets us in the confidence to say no to progressively bigger and bigger things. So when our little voice is screaming at us to say no to a really obvious thing that doesn't really matter, practice simply saying no. 
trusting yourself to say no, feeling discomfort and feeling unanchored by saying no, but actually thinking of that as a really good sign, not as something that I've done wrong. My empathetic person, because I'm showing empathy to myself, I'm not going to rescue the situation. I'm actually allowing myself to find who I am again finally. As a rescuer, as a person who is an enabler in that way, we often forget who am I? And feeling unanchored for a period of time, feeling that uncomfortableness of being unsure is actually a really good sign that you're actually learning to find, to take direction for yourself. If you've been a people pleaser for an extended period of time, you've actually forgotten that little skill in life of what genuinely brings you joy. So I hope this little quick video helps in terms of slowly breaking that cycle and slowly understanding that of course you're going to feel extremely uncomfortable. Of course you're going to feel extremely unanchored, untethered to what would be your normal habits. However, both those feelings are actually feelings that we want to feel because they are telling us that we are changing and we're actually not lying to ourselves anymore and we are starting to put ourselves first. That doesn't mean you have to suddenly turn into an awful person, a hard ass. You can still help others, but help them on your terms. Help them with what is possible for you can do without putting yourself beyond the limits of your own emotions and endurance. Remind yourself that sometimes being uncomfortable is for the right reasons. I hope this genuinely helps. Give me a little comment if you found it either difficult or you're understood once you start to notice how many times you say sorry in a sentence and starting to just change that first little thing and also how long it took you because sometimes it takes a little bit of time to really then find your own direction. It's usually at least three months, sometimes even six months before you actually start to feel you're confident enough with yourself of which direction you want to go first in. Good luck. Remember to like and subscribe. I hope you enjoy these videos. And my name is Ben Nefield. I'm a leadership coach and I hope to see you on the next one. And remember to be kind and the most important to be kind to is yourself. Take care. I'll see you in the next one.